We are live in Liverpool with just a couple of hours to go to the Eurovision Song Contest Grand Final. Fans have come from across the country and around the world as the city hosts on behalf of Ukraine. It's a sea of sparkles and glitter behind me as diehard enthusiasts pack the fan zone to watch tonight's competition on the big screen. Kisses for me, save all your kisses for me. And we catch up with a previous UK winner, now bringing happiness to people in care homes through music. And also on the programme this evening, another day of disruption for train passengers as members of the RMT rail union strike in England. The Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visits Italy to meet the Pope and to hold talks with political leaders. And fallen saints Southampton are relegated from the Premier League. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Liverpool Waterfront, an area now teeming with Eurovision fans from around the world for tonight's grand final in the arena just a few minutes from here. The UK, of course, is hosting on behalf of last year's winners, Ukraine. The contest can't be staged there because of Russia's invasion. And we're told that tonight's programming will reflect the culture of Ukraine, as well as that of the host city. The show kicks off in just a couple of hours' time. Sweden and Finland are among the favourites to win. Our first report tonight is from our arts correspondent, David Silito, who's been out in the city soaking up the atmosphere. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Welcome to Liverpool. Brilliant. Amazing. amazing. Absolutely amazing. And there's what you might call a bit of a buzz. Planet Eurovision has landed. And did you have to be convinced to wear this? No, 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 no. I, I, I love it. First time when I see that. I mean, give me that. <laughs> because when I put it that on, I feel so... Uh, Superhero. And after all that build up, the question is is Liverpool embracing the Eurovision spirits? And uh, well, I think that gives you your answer. So fabulous to bring so many different people together in such a probably quite a traumatic world at the moment with what's going on. And you know, everyone's so positive, everyone's so lovely. And this is what you want. The city is bouncing. Just look at the queues for the Eurovision Village, the live venue for those who couldn't get tickets for the main arena. Always Harrogate. Just compare it with when Harrogate staged the show in 1982. Back then, Eurovision felt like a golf club dinner dance. These days, it's like a city-wide carnival, a sequin-strewn Olympics of music. And the blue and yellow of Ukraine is everywhere. And there'll be a lot of attention on how the country is represented in tonight's show. Eurovision's no politics rule means there'll be no video address from Vladimir Zelensky, but rehearsals have been watched closely to see how far a contest staged in the UK can reflect Ukraine. What do you make of the uh, response of Liverpool? It's great, especially people. It's amazing people. It's very touchable to speak with them. Uh, they're not only very friendly, but very much supportive. Do you think Ukraine is being reflected here properly? Uh, quite well. But it depends whether we win or not. <laughs> <laughs> And there is a good chance of two wins in a row for Ukraine. But the favourite is Loreen from Sweden. The UK's hopes lie with May Muller. And I wrote a song, which will be the final song of the night, in a show which will be, for the first time, open to votes from viewers beyond the 37 Eurovision countries. 
I was standing in this exact spot about six months ago asking the question, do you think it would work in Liverpool? Do you think the crowds will come? Well, there is your answer. This venue, which after all is like an overspill for the arena, people who couldn't get the main tickets, well, it's at maximum capacity tonight. 15,000 people will be here. If you haven't got a ticket, do not attempt to try to come here. This place is also just one of, well, dozens of places. There are thousands and thousands of people here. This is a city which is awash in sea and sequins. Jane. <laughs> Isn't it just? David, thank you. David Silito there. Well, tonight, May Muller is trying to become just the sixth UK act to win Eurovision. Back in 1976, Nicky Stevens was part of Brotherhood of Man. They triumphed with Save Your Kisses for Me. She still works in music today, singing to people living in care homes. Our entertainment correspondent, Colin Patterson, went to see her at work. Kisses for me, save all your kisses for me. A Eurovision winner performing every week bye -bye, where you live. Baby, bye -bye. Nikki Stevens was part of Brotherhood of Man when they triumphed for the UK in 1976. That's her second from the left in the white. Now she has a job entertaining the residents at three care homes, including Bourne View in Poole, and absolutely loves it. During the pandemic, lockdown came. We couldn't perform anywhere, Brotherhood of Man. Everywhere was closed, theatres were closed. And I saw this job advertised. And are you a singer? Are you an entertainer? Would you like to be a companion? And I thought, well, I don't care who I'm a companion to. I can get out of the house. I was supposed to be just six months, and I'm here two and a half years later. And it's clear how much it means to the residents. I saw you singing along. Yes, but I would share a secret. I wasn't making a sound because I'm not sure that I'm in tune. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mimer, Yvonne. <laughs> anyway, I joined in and we're all very happy up here. When you're 106, I think you can do what you like, frankly. Yeah, and don't tell anybody, but you can. <laughs> Sing along over, it was time for an experiment. What would the residents of Bourne View make of this year's UK entry by May Muller? I didn't like it at all. The thing I particularly don't like is that it was an almost a revenge type of song. And we have been talking here about the importance of kindness. I quite liked it. It's, and I like the way she sang it. And I like the choreography. But I don't think it'll win the prize. I enjoyed it very much. It had a nice beat to it. And I hope it does well at the Eurovision. This is the most positive review we've had. Well, I don't care. That's the way I think about it. Well, you're allowed to be positive. May Muller could be delighted. She'll be punching the air that she's got a good review Just from tell you. Her. <laughs> yeah. And before we left, we discovered that one resident has a very special birthday coming up. I'm John Whitwell, uh, and I'm 99. When did you turn 100? 14th of May. That's the weekend of Euro. That's the day after Eurovision, in yeah. fact. Will you be watching Eurovision? <laughs> no. <laughs> I never have done. <laughs> and seeing this on television convinced me even more. <laughs> John, happy birthday for in advance. Thank you very much indeed. There we have it. A guarantee at least one Brit will be celebrating this weekend. Colin Patterson, BBC News, Pool. Instead I wrote a song. <laughs> Well, back here on the Liverpool waterfront, I'm joined, of course, by my excellent colleague, the BBC's Steve Rosenberg, who I'm sure you know by now, is an excellent pianist and a lifelong fan of Eurovision. And it's, it's so good to hear your thoughts, Steve, because Eurovision is Marmite. It's not to everyone's taste. What is it about this that is so special? Jane, I haven't seen so many smiles in one place for a very long time. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. The city of Liverpool has embraced Eurovision, like very few host cities that, that I can remember, there's such um, a vibe, an incredible vibe, a sense of positivity here. And that's what Eurovision is all about. Because you and I, in our jobs, 
so much of the time we're reporting on, on bad news, aren't we? And yes. sometimes talking about the horrors uh, yeah. happening in the world. But this is a reminder that there's one day in the year when 160 million people around the world can sit down and watch an incredible TV extravaganza, a remarkable musical show that will put smiles on people's faces. Yes, and we all need that. Steve, thank you so much. Enjoy tonight, Steve Rosenberg. And, and that's absolutely it. The number of people I've spoken to here, especially people who are, uh, some people who are born and bred in Liverpool, who might not have been Eurovision fans, but one man said to me, well, it's just about happiness, isn't it? And that's why I'm so glad Liverpool won the bid for Eurovision. And that really does uh, encapsulate it. We'll have a little bit more from here later in the programme. For now, I'll hand you back to Ben in the studio. Jane, thank you very much indeed. Now, rail passengers, including those... she got on on the BBC Sport website. Now, back to Jane in Liverpool. Lizzie, thank you very much. Welcome back to the Liverpool waterfront. We are overlooking the Eurovision fan zone. This is where 15,000 people who all had to get a ticket to be there are going to be watching tonight's Eurovision on the big screen. Our culture editor, Katie Razzle, is here with me. The eyes of the world, really, Katie. I mean, this is such a moment for Liverpool, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, you and I have got dressed up, but we can't compete with what's <laughs> going on out there. All the sequins, all the glitter. I've just come from the arena where the dress rehearsal was going on, and there's a lot more of that to look forward to yes. tonight. But, of course, this is about much more than that. For this city, it's a huge economic boost. It's about tourism. The streets are packed. And more widely, as you say, all eyes are on the UK tonight. 160 million people are expected to watch the grand final, and it's our opportunity to remind people of our great musical tradition traditions, our culture. I know Eurovision isn't everyone's cup of tea and some of the acts are quite frankly a bit bizarre, yeah. but uh, at the same time it is about cooperation between nations. It's about, you know, celebrating other people's musical traditions and it's really important for the LGBT community. It's all about this contest acceptance and also I'd say here in Liverpool a reminder that the freedoms we have here in our country aren't even possible in some of the countries taking part in this contest. Mm, absolutely. Katie, for now, thank you very much, Katie Razzle and all of it being staged, of course, on behalf of Ukraine. And uh, for anyone who is watching tonight, I was lucky enough to sneak into that final dress rehearsal as well. And there is quite a show coming our way, a very, very slick, impressive production with some fantastic stage effects. It all gets away uh, underway at uh, 8 o'clock this evening. If you didn't know, you'll be able to watch it live on BBC One and the BBC iPlayer, of course. You will have to stay up late to catch the UK's entry because May Muller is due to be the very last act to perform. She is number 26 on the running order. So it's a late night in so many ways for people watching in this country and around the world. Uh, that's just about it now for, from here in Liverpool. Um, I will be back with a late bulletin very late after the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, now on BBC One, though, it is, of course, time for the news wherever you are in the country tonight. From everybody here on the Liverpool waterfront, for now, good night.